Jamal, the hitman, Charlo, ready to feel the energy from his hometown crowd. The first WBC 160-pound champion was Dick Tiger tonight. It's hashtag Lions only, the hitman. Charlo making his maiden voyage, his full 160-pound belt holder against the contender winner and upset-minded Brandon the Cannon Adams. Here's Jimmy Lennon Jr. And ladies and gentlemen, as we approach the main event, we extend a very special welcome to the brave men and women serving our country around the world. And joining us tonight on AFN, the American Forces Network. And now, ladies and gentlemen, the time has come for the main event, the WBC Middleweight Championship of the World. Please welcome the boxers as they make their way to the ring. First, here is the contender middleweight tournament champion and the world ranked challenger from Los Angeles. Please welcome Brandon the Hammer Adams. credits faith and a courageous sense of humor for surviving gang and drug culture in his hometown neighborhood between Compton and Watts in California. But a late start in the sport of boxing and a three-year hiatus during his professional career due to promotional issues has made him hungrier than ever. Here's an interesting factoid. Ten of his last 11 fights have been in televised tournaments, including winning the rebooted contender tournament with a 10-round unanimous decision against Shane Mosley Jr. last November. Paulie, in many ways, Brandon Adams is playing with house money tonight. Yeah, you know, you almost, you almost think like he shouldn't even be here. He's been in these tournaments. He's done well. So for him, he's enjoying the moment and taking it as it comes. And so far, taking it as it comes has done pretty well in his career. You know, these tournaments he's been in, He's lost, he's lost, he got all the way to the finals of the Boxeo tournament. He won the contender tournament. So it's brought him here and right on the cusp of a world championship. He's expected not to win again, just like he was expected not to win those tournaments. So for him, like you said, it's house money. See how he does it tonight. Working with longtime trainer Dub Huntley, and for the first time officially here in this matchup, working with Freddie Roach outside of the contender series where he first worked with the Hall of Fame trainer. Dub Hundley's life story inspiring the characters played by Morgan Freeman and Clint Eastwood in the Academy Award winning Million Dollar Baby. Tonight, Hundley hopes it's all about Million Dollar Brandon. And now, and now making me. his way to the ring, here is one half of the Sensational Boxing Twins from Houston. Here is the undefeated WBC middleweight champion of the world, Jamal Hitman Charlo. Bang 
and all in my trunk. Trunk full of funk, I ain't never been a punk. A blow on skunk, a blow on Doja. Military minds and I'm an H-time soldier. Out the streets of the Riz Monfold. Not no, and see I still ain't a Letting boys know every day of the year. I pin my pen and I give my point clear. Why these fellas wanna talk down? I don't know. Gotta take a trip to Acapulco from the folk with my faux folk on my side when I ride. Ready to do another on my side and the five five till I'm gone. Homie, oh glory. I made time to Kelly just like Robert Ory. If I do a murder, flee the murder scene. This is sort of on the track. I can't find no lean. It's about war, not about peace. But like me, I'm about knocking out know teeth. A fighter who hits as hard as the bars being dropped by Houston rapper Zero Jamal, the hitman Charlo, looking to protect his Zero with an explosive performance tonight, Al, in his first fight as a full 160 pound belt holder. Take a look at the tail of the tape for this matchup. For um, Jamel Charlo, the reach advantage and the height advantage, very important. Uh, and really, even it's surprising that tonight when they rehydrated, Brandon Adams came in at a weight that was higher than Charlo because he's truly more of a 154 pound fighter. We'll see if that benefits him. And the rules for the main event, no standing eight count, no three knockdown rule. Only the referee can stop the fight. A fighter cannot be saved by the bell in any round. If an accidental foul or headbutt causes a fight to end within four rounds, it's a no decision. After four rounds, they go to the scorecards for a technical decision. We are in the Lone Star State, the Houston homecoming for the Hitman. And here with the official introductions for tonight's main event, Jimmy Lennon Jr. Ladies and gentlemen, we welcome you to the NRG Arena as Premier Boxing Champions presents the featured bout of the evening brought to you by Lions Only Promotions and TGB Promotions in association with Banner Promotions, the Tournament of Contenders, and Showtime, sponsored by MGM Resorts and Brooklyn Boxing. This bout is sanctioned by the WBC President Mauricio Suleiman. The supervisor is Alberto Guerra, along with the Texas Department of Licensing and Regulations. The executive director is Brian Francis. Judging at ringside, from Dallas, Texas, Don Griffin. From Hollister, California, Steve Morrow. And from Tulsa, Oklahoma, David Sutherland. And introducing our third man to the ring, he'll be giving instructions after the introductions, Lawrence Cole. All right, fans, here we go with the main event of the evening, 12 rounds of boxing with the WBC Middleweight Championship of the World. And now, ladies and gentlemen in attendance and boxing fans joining us around the world, Live from Houston, Texas, it's showtime! Introducing to you first, the challenger on my left, fighting out of the red corner, wearing red, white, and black trunks, and fighting out of Los Angeles, California. He weighed in at the middleweight limit of 160 pounds even, with a record of 21 wins and two losses. He has 13 wins coming by way of knockout. Tonight making his Showtime debut, please welcome the Contender Series middleweight tournament champion and the world ranked challenger, introducing Brandon, the Cannon. opponent across the ring, the defending world champion, fighting out of the blue corner tonight, making his hometown return. Wearing white trunks with red and blue trim, fighting out of and representing Houston, Texas. He weighed in at 159 and one half pounds. Undefeated in his campaign to the ring with a 
record of 28 wins, no losses, 21 wins coming by way of knockout as a two division world champion. Ladies and gentlemen, here is the former IBF junior middleweight world champion and the current hard hitting, undefeated, reigning and defending WBC middleweight champion of the world. Once again, our referee in charge, now to give instructions, Lawrence Cole. All right, gentlemen, when all the rules are in the dress room, I want you to obey my commands. Touch up all times, understood? Touch them up, good luck. Lawrence Cole, controversial referee, 29 years of pro experience. This is his 464th professional bout. As we get set, Jamal Hitman Charlo, first time in seven years, returning to his hometown of Houston. He says that Houston has a new George Foreman in the middleweight division, and he can bang like Big George. Brandon Adams, well, happy to be here, but not just happy to be here as an opponent. He knows that this is the year of the upset. He is definitely looking for a shocking victory here tonight. Bell and round number one, the belt holder Charlo in the white with red and blue trunks. Adams the challenger in the red, white, and black. And Adams will look to bring the fight to Charlo, but has to be cognizant of that counter right hand, Al, especially that counter right uppercut. Yeah, we saw that great piece that demonstrating how he used it against J-Rock Williams. Charlo told us it's important to establish his jab early in this fight. That will help set up that right hand. You know, you talk about Big George Foreman and what he was able to do in the heavyweight division and again known for his explosive power. Charlo, 21 knockouts out of his 28 victories. Meanwhile, Adams, 13 knockouts of his 21 victories. But he's gone on the record, Paul. He's saying, hey, I'm not a middleweight, my best weight, 154, but you don't turn down these types of opportunities. Yeah, and you know, you could tell that his frame is, is probably more suited for a lower weight class. He's not very tall at the weight. Uh, he's a bit more muscle bound, but you can probably tell that he can, he would be able to clearly make the, the, the light middleweight limit. And Al, there's not enough time in the day to talk about the reasons that Adams is getting these kinds of opportunities while Charlo watched the bigger fights in the division. We could be here all night talking yeah. about those, the politics of boxing, which unlike the politics of dancing has nobody feeling good. <laughs> he needs to, and for Charlo, he wants a dramatic victory this evening, if possible. You know, Adams likes to jab to the body. He has to be very careful of that because he'll get countered over the top of that jab by right hand by Charlo. So we'll see how that plays out in this fight. Adams can make his, his small frame work for him in terms of keeping himself a small yeah. target, but of course he's got to be at the correct range. Adams started boxing in his late teens and actually takes a lot of his footwork and his rhythm from martial arts movies. A big uh, Jackie Chan fan, big Bruce Lee fan, favorite movie Rumble in the Bronx. I don't think he wants to turn this into a rumble in Houston against a guy with the physical attributes of a Jamal Charlo Al. Yeah, well, but in one respect, that's true. But he does need to at least get in so he can fight a little bit on the inside. He has a very good overhand right that he can land, but he's going to have to cut the distance a little bit. He also told us as a child he was a big power in just one. Yes, <laughs> and Ultimate Warrior fan. We're getting all the references in. Of course, Ultimate Warrior here in Texas was the Dingo Warrior, Al. You can impress your friends with that factoid. Thank you, Al. I appreciate that. 30 seconds left in the first round. And Charlo looking to try to find a home. Again, started slowly against Korobov, but really he was impacted by the fact he just watched his twin brother Jamel lose his title and had to deal with an 11th hour change of opponent. And Lancey uppercut there. attacking the body if you want to do that all fight long we'll take a look at the keys to victory for these two men starting with jamal charlo 
I mentioned the jab. He wants to get that going early in this fight. And why does he want to get it going? It will lead to the right hand. And that is it, the big power punch for him. And one of the ways he can land the right hand is, in fact, the uppercut. And uh, he did land a very good one right toward the end of the round. Adams took it pretty well. Moving over to Brandon Adams. He's got to keep his hands up because sometimes he lowers them a little bit and he's got to be aware of those right hands coming. He cannot lunge in. If he does that, it will make him more susceptible to the uppercut and any counter punches by Charlo. His big power punch is the overhand right. He's got to try to sneak that punch in. Well, in round two, Adams told us he had a choice of fighting Jamal or Triple G, with whom he had sparred seven years ago in Big Bear, California. He chose Charlo better money, and the fight is at 160 pounds, not what was uh, Triple G's mandated weight of 164. I think it's ironic tonight that when they rehydrated, uh, Brandon Adams comes in at a couple pounds higher than Charlo. That's surprising. Charlo looking to plant the jab right to the body. Charlo uses the jab highly effectively. Stop. Get back. Charlo starting to get that right hand unleashed. And he wants to lull Adams into range. There's a right hand by Charlo. Adams, as Paulie pointed out, Adams wants to be low enough so he can get under that right hand. Well, at 5'8", against a fighter who is six feet tall, he can definitely get there. Yeah, under the right circumstances. And it seems like Charles is still trying to figure out uh, a little bit of the awkwardness of Adams. Adams wants to sort of rush in, stay real low, like right there, you know? Charles still trying to get the timing down, trying to figure out exactly the pattern of movement so that he can try to get the timing. Oh, that was a down. right hand that clipped the job, Adams. She's not just he's not landing them the way he wants to. It's grazing mostly. But you can feel that, you know, that right hand is going to get there at some point. And Adams is going to need to, to, to create a different distance. Right hand bounced off the shoulder of Adams. So Adams, Adams, Adams to reset and center. Adams makes himself a difficult target. He just has to figure out the way to counterpunch, uh, as I was explaining in the, some of the fights earlier. You want to make sure you're counterpunching at time so that the, uh, the other fighter doesn't get too comfortable throwing what he wants to at you. Adams blindly throwing the jab to the chest area. Charlo with that right hand cocked. Faints, doesn't throw it. Adams along the ropes. Fainting, but really leaning into a potential uppercut range. And now Charlo mugging Adams along the ropes. 30 seconds left in the second. Left hook to the body on the exit. Adams has done a pretty good job, as Paulie points out, of making himself a difficult target for these punches by Charlo. It's just he hasn't generated any offense. There's a sharp jab that lands, and that right uppercut just missed by Charlo. Final 15 seconds of the second. Charlo wanting to throw that right uppercut. Adams may be, may be inclined to throw, use the left hook to try to time that right uppercut. Charlo's looking to throw every yeah. time. Good idea, gets in close. And there is Jamel Charlo, one minute younger than his identical twin brother, the former 154 pound belt holder. He wanted a crack at regaining the title last Sunday against Tony Harrison in a rematch. Harrison was injured. Charlo facing Jorge Cota, and Charlo crushing okay. Jorge Cota. Yeah, tremendous show of power. He wanted to get this knockout, and we, we were joking with. Uh, Jamal, do you want to try and knock your opponent out quicker than Jamal? And he, it's going to be hard because he, Jamal showed tremendous power getting caught out very early and uh, hoping that he can get that rematch with Harrison pretty soon. He wants to try and get his title back. And the twin brothers, you see... Jamal looking at Jamel at ringside. Jamel shouting out instructions as we begin the third round of this 160-pound title affair between the champion 
Charlo and the challenger Adams. Adams again ducking down, trying to find a road and being warned by Cole. I don't know. I don't know what the warning's for. Well, I said he was one of the more controversial referees. I wasn't lying. If this is an amateur fight, okay. I mean, if, he, if, 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 if Adams can't duck, he's in trouble in this fight. <laughs> and that's, a, that's one of the things that makes Adams awkward. He gets down real low. He's yeah. already short, so it kind of makes it a little bit difficult for Charlo to... Uh, Find him. Charlo wanting to try to cut off the ring on Adams. Adams again just coming forward, somehow trying to eradicate that, that height and reach difference out. The one punch that he could use and oh, oh nice left hook by Charlo is the overhand right. That has a way of getting in, but he hasn't found a really appropriate time to throw that Adams. Nice little short nice left hook. Short left hook indeed. Minute gone here at round three. Adams goes to the body. Charlo misses with that sweeping shot. Can't land the jab, follows up with the right. That was attempted the hook there. The jab by Adams just missing. It almost seems like Adams is still trying to figure out what he needs to do consistently. Charlo has figured out what he wants to do consistently. He just oh. has to, hasn't been able to do it yet. Crowd here at NRG Arena. Rallying behind Jamal Charlo. Born in Lafayette, Louisiana, but raised in Houston, Texas. In fact, lives just 20 miles away from this colossal complex. There's a stadium, there's another arena. It's quite the space here, Al. It really is. Space and, city. And he was happy to have this fight here. A lot of casuals, boxing fans, as well as the hardcore fans. Final minute in the third round. You know, he said, uh, Paul used the reference, and he said uh, Adams would be spunky and energetic. Oh, Adams. He's been that in a defensive way, just not an offensive way. Adams walked into a short left hook right to the body by Charlo. And there again, Charlo puts together a combination, partially blocked by Adams. Adams has a hard, stiff jab that lands once in a while. He just yeah. hasn't been able to do anything behind it. He started to get, at least get the left hook in range, Adams, but again, there it is, but not being able to land it. And he should throw it as a double left hook to the body and the head. Now, Adams leaning in on Charlo. Charlo on a couple of left hooks. Charlo doubled up instead of. Yep, and there's a upper cut on the inside by Charlo. Of course, the crowd will respond to any punch that Charlo throws. Adams had some good range oh, there. Oh. Oh. <laughs> so Houston coming alive here following that round. Houston's latest belt holder, Jamal Charlo, following in a rich boxing tradition in H-Town. So many great fighters on the list. Of course, George Foreman uh, at the apex. Uh, Reggie Johnson, a great middleweight champion. Our own Raul Marquez, who was a 154-pound champion from Houston and carried uh, the honor of this city into the Olympics as well. And current 140-pound uh, contender, Regis Progre, who is is a terrific fighter. Ten In one. fact, the champion, not just a contender. And there one. is yes. El Diamante, Raul Marquez, treating the gang to the mother of all Mexican meals on Thursday night. Gracias. And of course, you can hear Marquez and Alejandro Luna with our Spanish telecast. Of course, Juan Diaz is on there too, a guy I know yeah. very you, well. You know very well. You had your hair in Houston. <laughs> it's quite the uh, post-fight interview. <laughs> Oh, we fought uh, twice, so we got to commit each other very well. Round four here as Adams and Charlo looking to get to know each other very well in this title fight. Uh, Charlo's landing 40% of his power punches, which is everything other than the jab, 14 to 35. He normally lands right around 41% as a middleweight. This is Charlo's fourth fight as a full-fledged 160-pounder. In that last round, we saw Adams get close enough to, uh, to kind of fight off the chest of Charlo. It wasn't all good for him, but at but least he had a chance to land some punches. He, he's always putting his head down and throwing almost blindly, Pauly, as, as Adams trying to get inside. Or do you think that's done by design? I think it's done by design. I think he's just trying to keep himself a small target. He knows how short uh, Charlo punches and how, how sharply Charlo punches. He's got to be careful with the uppercut, though. He yeah. caught one at the, at the belt, the last round, the last And Charlo just landed another short right uppercut on the inside. There's a right to the body. 
by Jamal Chuck. But that was a good attempt at a counter with a left hook by, mm -hmm. by Adams, at least. And you count on the same side the punch is coming from because if you're, not, if you're punching, you're not covering up. And Adams with the jab to the body. Adams tried that overhand right a moment or two ago. And we said that Adams would be a hungry challenger, and he is, you know, coming forward perpetually. A minute and a half left in the fourth. I think what he's trying to do is just make Jamal uncomfortable. Uncomfortable, right. Jamal lands a short right hand. Goes to Dabati, sweeping left hook on the exit. Say it, Al, say it. <laughs> hard, okay. hard to believe there was a break there. And Adams... Absorbed another punch from Charlo. 60 seconds left in the fourth. Right cross by Adams. Charlo now throwing punches, missing with the left. When Adams closes the range like oh, this, they head, they butted heads there, Al. I'm sorry. Yeah, that was that that was a rough one. Then Charlo got the brunt of it. When he closes range like that, it makes for some exciting moments for the fans because they're both wailing away. Wailing the operative word, my yeah. Hall of Fame friend, as we reach 30 <laughs> seconds left in the fourth frame. And there's a sidestep from Adams, but doesn't land. Again, and Charlo very calm in the pocket, looking to land the one-two, looking to land that counter. 15 seconds left. High guard by Adams. We head to round five. As Adams got closer and closed the range and got on the inside, there were a couple of times where their heads came together. There's oh. one. Oh, yeah. And uh, that was when Adams was trying to land the left hand. And then later in the round, it happened again as they were on the inside. And of course, they both put their head down. Adam's trying to get lower than Charlo, and Charlo deciding I'm gonna try and make sure that uh, he doesn't get lower than me, and that's when uh, the second clash really affected Charlo. Undefeated welterweight belt holder Errol Spence Jr., another star in the Lone Star State, enjoying the, the vibe here at the NRG Arena. Expect to see him probably against Sean Porter later. This and in year. a way, Adams could almost try to employ a Sean Porter style offense oh, against a guy like Charlie. Right hand by Adams there to start the round. Yeah, Same dimensions. Yeah, you're right. He started out with that right. You know, he normally throws as an overhand right. That one was kind of straight. The thing about Porter, though, is he's a big guy for that weight, for the weight. Yes, so he's yes. able to physically exactly. muscle you around. The difference with Adams is, although he looks like a tank, he's still small for this weight. Right. Look at his legs. And there, Charlo. Battering away. Again, looking for that right hand. Still. Looking for an uptick in his offensive output. Double jab, followed by the right cross that just misses for the champ. Charlo told us, I'm, I'm going to execute my game plan. I'm not going to get too excited because the crowd's behind me, and he has been very patient here, trying to figure out he's winning these rounds very likely, uh, but being remaining patient while doing it. And of course, wanting to send a statement to the rest of the division and the divide, of course, that exists when you look at the fellow belt holders at 160 pounds. Jab pops the head back of Adams. And that's one of the first really good jabs we've seen. Charlo's not gotten that punch off as much as he would like. On the inside, another one by Charlo. See, Adams a lot of times just wants to get in just to mm -hmm. be by the body so that he can make Charlo uncomfortable. And he has a chance at least to land some punches from that range. Yeah, and if you can frustrate an opponent, sometimes you can create mistakes. So he's, you know, he's giving it his best effort. As a child, Adams had a periodic heart murmur. That and his family's financial situation prevented him from playing sports, including his first left football. He gets staggered there, took boxing up in his late teens, and now looking to avoid these shots from Charlo, looking to hang on. Charlo teeing off on the challenger, Adams, under a minute left in the fifth. Good instincts to survive there by, by Adams. Rolling very well and getting low. Good combination by Jamel oh. Charlo. 
Jamal Chalo, excuse me. I think he got hurt with it, just walking into a jab. Wait a minute, I think I was supposed to see the replay between rounds. Chalo just misses with that one-two combination. Adams again lunges in, closing the distance, roughing up the champion or attempting to do so. The bigger Chalo able to separate. Adams misses with the jabs. Both misses with those punches, right hand to the body, left uppercut on the inside by Adams and just missed that sweeping left hook by Charlo, right uppercut on the inside by Charlo. Yeah, Adams has good instincts, man, because he's just, these punches are just whistling by him sometimes. that sequence from our overhead camera in which Jamal Charlo was able to get oh, right on the Adams chin. in trouble. It was the jab that started the issue and then he punched good combinations by him and kept his hands moving and Adams standing straight up and squaring himself up on the ropes but did have the good instincts to hold on. And uh, that jab, that jab, why did it hurt him? Because he, he walked into it and there you hear you see the follow-up combinations here. This is where he kind of did well because he didn't get hit too clean with the follow-ups. The shots are landing, but none of the power is really landing on these. He's able to roll with these because he was st still feeling the effects of the initial jab that that uh, put him there to begin with. And the jab hurt him because one, Jamal has a very stiff jab, number yeah. one. And number two, Brandon actually walked into it, Brandon Adams did. Round six and Jamal Charlo feeling the hometown love here tonight at NRG Arena, sellout of 6,408 fans showing up for Houston's latest titleist as he defends the title against Brandon Adams. That was a, in the last round of corner show stats, a high number thrown and landed for Charlo through 63 and landed 20. So that was a big round for him. Yes, Charlo known to be selective. And landing there, about 40% of his power punches. And there, yeah, you can see how the power punches figured into that. That's, uh, yeah, here tonight, 40% through show stats, but we saw the stats tonight. As continues to try to walk down Adams. Adams, again, just leaning in, coming forward, leaning with his head. Now backing up, and Charlo just misses with that right cross. Double jab, cuffing, left uppercut by Charlo. And again, Adams closes the distance, but leans in, and there he's that oh. uppercut, or excuse me, left hook, right hand by Charlo. Left hook again, clips Adams. There's a jab by Adams, who continues to come forward now. Yeah, and a full short left hook mixed in there as well, even though he's taking some punishment here, chopping. Left hook by Charlo. And Holly, I mean, Adams is closing the distance, wanting to rough up, make life uncomfortable for Charlo, but he's not scoring any points doing so. He's not, but again, he's trying to create mistakes. He's, 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 he, can't, he knows he can't box Charlo for talent here and for, for technique, so what he's trying to do is create mistakes, frustrate Jamal, and see what he gets out and of it. And there, another attempt yeah. at that right uppercut. One of the punches that's helped Charlo here when he, when Adams gets inside is his own left hook. Charlo's been landing a short Go left hook and that uppercut right uppercut again. on the inside again by Charlo Adams coming forward. Adams is showing a very good chin. Yes. Right. Another one-two combination in Charlo's box. It's, oh, there's a left catapult left hand from Adams that landed upstairs. Yeah, Adam's, Adam's a lively guy, and then like, like, like Charlo described him, he's spunky, you know, yep. he, he doesn't go away just because you... Oh, and he keeps coming forward, chopping left hand by Adam. That's the best, those are the two best Upper punches. Upper on the able. inside by Charlo, good stuff yep. here in the final half minute of the sixth round. Oh, both of them. I'll tell you, Adam's landed a couple Great good left punches. punches from both guys with some good shots. And there's a sweeping right hand by Charlo across the jawline of Adams. Stuff here in the sixth as we head into the second half of this 160 pound title fight in Houston, Texas. I want you to listen to me now, okay? You gotta listen to me now, all right? Everything is good. You win in every round. I'm not worried, we're not worried about that, okay? You're trying too hard to knock him out, okay? Side, 
Charlo landing at short left hook that I talked about and the uppercut. I mean, those were two excellent punches, and Adams was able to take them. Uh, and and later on in the round, Adams was able to start to get the left hook in. This one came, and even though his hand was up, still it kind of snuck in there uh, beyond the right hand of Charlo. And, you know, Ronnie Shields with some interesting advice and saying, you're trying too hard to get the knockout. And uh, there could be some truth in that. And there was questions heading in in front of the hometown crowd. Would he try too yeah. hard to impress? I mean, he's been patient to that yeah, point. He looked but, like but then he kind of bent in and said, I'm going to duke it out. And here we go, second half of this 12-round, 160-pound title fight. Jamal Charlo elevated this week to full championship status after WBC made Canelo the first franchise champion. Crowd here in Houston showing their approbation for the hometown fighter, but Adams remains in the fight. As we bring in our unofficial scorer, Steve Farwood, how do you have it at the halfway point? Mo, I've given Charlo every round but one. I have it 59-55. I did give Adams the sixth round. Judges always have to try to resist the temptation to score a round for a fighter just because he did better than the, in the previous rounds that he lost. I don't think I did that. I think Adams landed enough left hands in the sixth to uh, get the round, to edge the round, but otherwise all Charlo. Charlo Pine with the jab. Again, oh, right uppercut. Right hand and a right uppercut scored for Charlo on the inside. Charlo has landed some superb power punches in this fight. Well, ones that I think he might have thought might knock Adams down or really hurt him. Adams has been down twice, both times against John Thompson mm -hmm. back in the his last loss in the 2015 Boxino Tournament Final. And for that fight, in truth, Adams had to lose like 12 pounds in a day and a half. So he may have been weakened a bit in that fight. That's the only time he's shown a suspect chin. Charlo has never been knocked down, just missed again with that right uppercut as Adams again leaning in. Charlo just misses with a sweeping left hook. What has impressed you most after the midway point for a Charlo Pauly? Well, I, think I like the way Charles is still keeping his composure. Yes, Ronnie Shield is right. Sometimes he's trying too hard for the knockout, but this is not an easy guy to keep your patience no. against Brandon Adams. You know, I noticed the, the main combination both Charlo brothers like to throw a lot of times is that double left, double left jab, straight right hand. Yes. And it sets up a lot of big power shots, sometimes even knockouts for both of them. And it's a clean, short combination. And Charlo has not been able to land it tonight because Adams is so short he gets underneath it. Oh, and the jab by Adams there. So he's had to use some, had to, you know, use some patience to set up some other shots, maybe be inside and have to deal with the rough, rough house tactics of Adams. So, you know, I, I mean, the fact that he's winning and he's probably up comfortably, even though it's an uncomfortable fight, is just still impressive. Both throwing the close quarter shoulder bump and then the jab from Charlo. Final 15 seconds of the seventh round. Adams again going to the body. Charlo misses with that one too. Okay, now you just give him too many rounds away. Okay, yeah. the only reason is because you're not letting your hands go. Yeah. Okay. I feel it. All right, now when, when he jabs, you're slipping it, and the right hand's there for you, but you just have to let it go. All right, you just let's let your hands go, okay? All right. Come on, you're a big and strong guy. Let's go. You're backing him up all night long. He, he, he can't bite going backwards. That's true. All right, let your hands go. Come on. Hall of Fame trainer Freddie Roach on, in giving instructions to Brandon Adams and Al as we begin this next round. I, you know, you listen to Freddie Roach, makes a lot of sense. What other, what adjustments would you like to see Adams making, and, and how can he throw more punches? Yeah, well, he wants him to throw the right hand over the jab of Charlo, and they feel like maybe that overhand right coming in was supposed to be one of his big weapons. He just has to try to throw it, but it's a lot easier uh, said than done. 
triple jab that third one going to the body courtesy of Jamal Charlo. Also when Charlo doubles with the jab it makes it harder. That left hook of Charlo has been a very good weapon in this fight. And Adams has absorbed oh. it well and there's a left hand. You know, actually, the punch that Adams has landed better in this fight has been the left yes. hook, so maybe that's what he should concentrate more on. But not enough of any punch, really. And no. uh, there's, again, Charlo wanting to work the jab, establish the stick here in the eighth. Robin Weaver flashing the jab. Adams trying to find some way, some opportunity to try to land something of significance. But again, the height and reach advantages belong to the belt holder, Charlo. One of the big surprises, I think, is that Charlo has, in fact, landed some of his best power punches. And Adams has gone nowhere. Yep. But yet the jab is the one that the one that hurt Adams, right? Yeah, <laughs> ironically, right. Yeah, you're right. That's a good point. And Adams leading with the left, closing the distance. And oh, Charlo punching that right hand that just misses again. Adams trying to make himself as small as possible, low as possible. Gets close again, but turns it into a Greco-Roman wrestling match every time. Under a minute left in the eighth. Cut again by Charlo. And that's why Adams can't really be too comfortable even when he gets inside and why he has to try to keep it messy and dirty in there yeah. because, because Charlo has that wicked right uppercut on the inside. And so if you get too comfortable in there, he will hit you with it. Mm -hmm. Just ask J-Rock Williams, who did bounce back impressively to become a 154-pound belt holder, beating Jared Hurd in what was Hurd's homecoming fight out. Yes, yeah. Brilliant effort by both men, but J-Rock especially. Really impressed with J Rock's trainer, Stephen Edwards. Yeah. His one of the intelligence and insight and the way he breaks it down. Yeah. His weekly mailbag. One of the best in boxing. Oh, wow. Wow. nice overhand wow. work by Adams. And oh, Adams wow. just misses with the right, and Charlo misses with the right. I need them hands to be high when you get on the rope. All right? Don't take no chances. Don't get up. Don't get up tall on the rope. You gotta get down on the rope. Okay? Yeah. Listen. All you gotta do is stand in the middle of the ring. Just keep touching the guy with the jab. Add your face. Don't worry about the fight. All right? Yeah. Just keep work. Just keep sticking it with the jab. Fade it. Charlo against the ropes and. He comes in low, but, but throws that overhand right. I actually thought there would be a jab preceding that overhand right, but he was able to get it in anyway. And what does Charlo do? Of course, he lands one of his uppercuts. Looking down at the body, I think Charlo expected a body shot. Instead, wow. it was Adams that no, came no. with the overhand right. And that's the thing. Adams sold it with his eyes. By yes. not looking up at the head, Charlo reading Adams' eyes started protecting the body. Yep. So he never expected the head shot. This is round at number nine. In round seven, Adams threw 28 total punches, connecting with seven. Freddie Roach exhorted him to let his hands go. Al, in round eight, Adams threw 26 total punches, only four connected. Yeah, he's not, he, he, you know, he, he's got just got issues trying to be active because of what Charlo does and what Polly talked about, the, the punches he could throw on the inside to um, dissuade Adams from being aggressive and being busy. Effective use of the jab to begin round number nine by Charlo. Doesn't follow up with that vaunted right hand, however. Oh, there's that right uppercut, but then counter upstairs by Adams. Yeah, nice overhand right by Adams. Yeah, when you throw an uppercut from a little farther out, as Charlo did, you can be countered with that overhand. Well, he, he bought the, Adams sold him the jab, and, 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 and Charlo bought it by throwing, you throwing the right uppercut. But in reality, Adams was looking to set up the overhand right. And now Charlo, though, leaning forward. Double pumps the jab. We talked about this being a big step up for Adams. As you look at the unofficial scorecard belonging to Farhad, Charlo unloading on Adams. 
Adams, again, rolling very well. He's, yep. he's not the easiest guy to hit clean. And Adams has never been 12 rounds, so as we head into these later rounds, that becomes a factor. Charlo is 2-0 in 12-round fights, so how well will Adams hold up in these championship rounds as we get to them? You know, in, in, in talking like I usually do fight day with uh, Steve Farhood, we, we talked about the potential for Charlo maybe trying too hard to, to look for that spectacular knockout to try to impress the hometown crowd. It's been a measured performance, yeah. but is, is there anything more you would like to see at this stage of the fight, Adam. You know, I honestly think he's done all the right things. It's just that these big punches haven't hurt Adams enough to knock him down or knock him out. Also, Adams is, is not me you got to deal with. Yeah. yeah, no, exactly. And proven to be durable. And there, Adams picking up a little confidence, it seems, here in round nine. Trying to give his Joe Frazier invitation. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah he's That's really right. enjoying right. himself here. That's Moken Joe. And trying the left hook, that one was blocked. Does that mean Cholo has to do his big George Foreman uh, yeah. counter invitation? Well, he's made the, uh, the reference. So, Brandon Adams hanging tough with Cholo. Cholo landing that right hand. And now Cholo trying to respond. So, a little showmanship here as we get into the deep waters of this 160 pound title fight. Coming up Friday, July 12th, Showbox features two unbeaten heavyweights in separate bouts with both facing rugged challengers. I feel like I'm the best heavyweight prospect, period. I'm here to take over. I'm telling y'all now that I'm coming to take over. I feel like I'm the new face. As a Swedish heavyweight to become world champion, that would be huge. I just gotta keep doing what I'm doing, working very hard. I have crazy power, but I actually think it's my vision. I can see your steps before you take them. A lot of heavyweights are not too agile, and I got good feet, and I got good speed for a heavyweight. Yeah, I gotta be ready, because when I get there, we're not playing no games. We come to destroy. Full fight card coming your way. Showbox, Friday, July 12th at 10 p.m. This is round 10. Jamal Charlo, 160-pound belt holder against Brandon Adams, the challenger. Both of them 29 years of age. Adams 21 and 2 with 13 KOs. The champion Charlo 28 and 0 with 21 victories inside the distance. Looking for that short right uppercut again. And you know, a catapult yeah. right hand blocked by Charlo, but an orthodox way to throw punches, but trying to make up that height and reach disparity. Charlo has doubled the amount of punches landed, landing uh, over uh, now 112 to only 53 for Adams, according to show stats, and has almost thrown twice as many. So it's been a dominant performance, even though he hasn't been able to hurt Adams or get him down or out. We have seen why any surprises be up due to that, though, well in terms of being able to not hurt Adams the way. Yeah, I, I am surprised because he's a, a, you know, he's a very good puncher, uh, though at 160 pounds, uh, you know, he, he couldn't get Korbov out the last time and hit him with some big punches. And he's hit Adams with big punches and he has not gone anywhere. But surprising because Charlo is a good puncher. So when he lands those kind of power shots, you'd think he would hurt somebody and at least knock them down. Anything to add to that, Paulie? No, no, I mean, you know, you, you, I can, the, the fight is just not going the way Adams wants it to go as far as the points, point system, but he's, he's behind in the fight, but he's, he's been as effective as he can be, and he's, he's, he's he succeeded in frustrating Charlo, but of course to get the win, he's got to put more punches That's together. right uppercut by Charlo, uh, clubbing right hand, left hook, and Adams stepping away, looking down to the canvas momentarily. That was started by the uppercut of Charlo. Yep, and Houston crowd now coming alive, sensing potential problems here for Adams, but Adams again using his feet, swinging wildly with the right, stepping out of the range, yet really still, I think he was rattled, trying to find his feet under him, mouse but below he, the left eye of Adams. But even when he's rattled, he keeps his composure yes. very well and he, he stays alive like he not, not only does he stay alive in there but you know he's throwing big shots so charlo can't just get reckless and try to finish him off and 
Alex Charlo showing that maturity, showing that patience, unloading the one-two. This, is, this has been a, an exercise in patience for Charlo, and this is going to be a, a fight that he comes out of out of it with a good experience. Regardless of what people, yeah, for will, both fighters. Regardless of what people, yeah, exactly. Regardless of what people will want to say, sure. Because some people will criticize Charlo for this fight, but this is a fight that will actually make him better. Three punch combination, Another punctuated by the right uppercut on the inside by Charlo. We are headed into the championship rounds. Jamal Hitman Charlo making the first defense of his full title against Brandon Adams in H Town. And Adams counting himself very well in this fight. We are two rounds ago. I would have thought that if this many uppercuts were landed by Charlo, that he would have knocked Adams out by now. That was one of the keys to victory I had before the fight. And here, you see, there's one there. We'll see another one here. Perfect uppercut landed by, and another one. These are jarring punches, and he's getting, he's pronating them. You see his back foot. It's not, he's not punching off the back foot. He's getting everything into these punches, and Adams, astonishingly, is taking them. When you get hit with uppercuts like that, Paulie, for the most part, you get hurt. Championship rounds are upon us here in Houston. Sharp, creative combinations by Charlo there. Now, the uppercut you were bringing out, out, not only did he land the uppercut, but he touched them on the right, on the other yes. side first. So it's to open up the uppercut. Very creative stuff by Charlo that gets lost in translation here because people will look at the things that Adams has done to make him uncomfortable. And of course, Adams also deserves credit. Adams blocking that left hook by Charlo Adams lunging forward again. And Adams has never seen the 11th round of the fight, so this is yeah, new territory. 10-2-0 for Charlo. And Adams missing, but low enough that Charlo misses as well. Adams with the uh, limbo defense. Uh, yeah, exactly. He got as low as he could possibly get. <laughs> I like that. That's a new phrase, the limbo defense. <laughs> There's a jab from Charlo. And our unofficial score, Steve Bard, has Charlo out way ahead. And I don't think there's much way to dispute that. Um, even though, as we said, Adams have done some things in this fight that's frustrated. Uh, Charlo landed some good punches, but nearly, not nearly enough to win uh, rounds. Yeah, but there's been storylines in these rounds. You know, sure, you look at the scorecard and you say, okay, this is a dominant fight by Charlo. And sure, he's way ahead, but he, oh, he's had a really good left by Adams. He's had to really think his way through things because well, Adams keeps right himself alive. Cut by Charlo. Good exchange there. Jab by Charlo. Adams, again, just avoiding the right uppercut. Everyone who bought a ticket tonight hoping to see another knockout. And Charlo promising to deliver one, but uh, Brandon Adams proving to be durable, resilient, and he does want to make things uncomfortable despite being behind on the scorecards. Continues to try to roughhouse Charlo here in the penultimate round. Brandon Adams did not want to go along with the storyline, did he? <laughs> you think of talk, thinking of Brandon Adams against all the 154 pounders, but he yeah. wants to go back down to that yeah. way. You know, he yes. makes some interesting yeah. matchups down there. That's a very good point. Charlo trying to keep. Adams at distance, trying to have him at the right range to land punches. He's doing so now. His left hook. Adams backs up, comes forward. Oh, jab through the guard by Charlo scores. Left uppercut by Adams. Chopping left hook by Adams. Right hand by Charlo. Right uppercut just misses. Okay, 
Look, I just need you to keep sticking the jab. That's all. Dumbing that jab up. Keep him on out there. Keep him at dip. Let's go. Go get him. Come on. That's two, three. Three. Come on. This is your fight, son. This is your fight. Let's go. Come on. You want it? Come on. Let's go do it right now. You know. Appreciative of what they've seen through 11 rounds. The homecoming for Jamal, the hitman Charlo has less than three minutes to close the show. Brandon Adams coming to H Town and thus far refusing to go down. And then not just because I'm in a cast right now, but also Adams is the kind of guy who will make you hurt your hands. You know, he's, he stays low, you hit him on the top of the head. And I think, I'm not sure, but I think I heard Jamal yes. complaining about his hand. I think uh, Ryan Shield alluded to that, something like that. We'll find out after the fight when he, for sure. Nice left took by Adams. Jab lands again. Now Charlo putting together a combination. Double jab by Charlo through the guard. Adams coming with a left. Adams going with a left to the body. Twelfth and final round. And if Charlo has hurt one of his hands, I'll tell you what, it isn't that he stopped throwing either the left no. or the right. So he's fighting, if he does have pain, he's fighting through it. That adrenaline of being here in front of family and friends, I'm sure playing a factor. Less than two minutes left in the fight. And sometimes you hurt your hand, it's not necessarily broken, but it just starts to swell. You hit a guy in the top of the head, and it just starts to ache. You know, it's bone-on-bone -bone collisions, you know? Regardless of the gloves, after a while, when the rounds go by, this is a 12-round fight. This has to take effect. Adams coming forward, blocks. The jab blocked by Charlo. Minute and a half left in this championship bout. Adams, who's been through it all in his life again, came to boxing in his late teens. Now trained by Dub Huntley and Freddie Roach. Charlo, meanwhile, been with Ronnie Shields, and there's Adams going to the body, even landed a couple of punches upstairs. Cole warning him about going low. A lot of character being shown by Brandon Adams. He came to Charlo's hometown, not intimidated, and he fought his fight. He's not going to win tonight, but he gave a good account of himself, and, uh, and, and he fought with no fear at all. And, and talk about Charlo's performance, Al, being his homecoming and everything that that entails. Yeah, you know, he's actually fought a very good fight here. He, he's, he's won virtually every round, but he wanted to knock out in this fight very badly, and it doesn't look like he's going to get it unless something dramatic happens in these last few seconds. by Charlo, 30 seconds left, and again, Adams backs up, says let's do it again. And again, Charlo's not able to land something no. too clean there, you know? And that's the frustrating part about dealing with Adams. And it's Adams looking for that lead left uppercut that just misses. So Brandon Adams did not want to follow the script coming into Houston, and here, at the NRG Arena, Charlo and Adams will go the distance. He may not have followed the script, but he made Charlo work for it, and Charlo with a very mature performance tonight. Well said, Paulie. Uh, fight and uh, 
obviously, as I alluded to, uh, Charlo throwing a lot more and landing a lot more. He normally lands 41% of his power punches. He landed 32%. You see the pained expression on Jamal Charlo's face. Clearly, there was a hand injury involved in this fight. Maybe his left hand. Yeah, it is. But yet, through that, he kept throwing that jab and left hook. Like, like, second or third round? Yeah, you did. You fought with him. It's okay, it's okay. Look, you want Charlo okay, seems to be good, disappointed man. Ronnie Shields yeah, trying to calm him down. You know, he wanted to put on an explosive show. I just swallowed hey. in the hand. Shit, we can't get no. Oh, you got that ice pack, right? Get that ice pack. Just put the ice on it. Well, the tattoo heart of a lion, both of them displaying plenty of heart here tonight. Brandon Adams and his first crack at a championship. Coming up, 160 pounds. I, and and Paulie, you mentioned it. Win, lose, or draw. He he could be a, a player at 154. Yeah, yeah, and he's a fun guy to watch. Yeah. You know, he'll love his personality as well. Nigga, what? Man, Only twins to win them in the same division. 154 pounds. You wonder what the delay is about, guys. Well, and having said that, here's Jimmy Lennon Jr. Ladies and gentlemen, after 12 rounds of action, we have a unanimous decision. Here are the score totals. Judge at ringside, David Sutherland scores about 119 to 109. Judges Don Griffin and Steve Morrow both scores about 120 to 108. All three in favor of the winner. And still, the WBC middleweight champion.